are these people? Do we know? <laughs> we know who Afshin Ratansi is. Um, another defender and supporter of Julian Assange has a show called Go Going Underground. I think it's now on Al Jazeera. It used to be at RT at one point. So, yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about what happened in Beirut. Um, so, he says Israel decimates... I think uh, Almazi uh, also was, was in around... Or Husseini. One of the two. Sam? I think, I think Husseini. Was, I it, yeah, uh, was over there, in, around there. Wow. Um, um, so, we talked about that, I think, with Fiorella, possibly. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe, but this... Uh, I think I saw that today. No, that was Saeed Mohammed Mirandi, you're thinking of, I believe. Oh, uh, that is who I'm thinking of. So, probably. Afshin Ratansi, uh tweets out... Now, this was before they announced that Nasrallah had been murdered. But when the city yep. block was leveled, another day, another Israeli war crime to add to the list. My reaction to Israel's assassination against Lebanese resistance miniature minister Hassan Nasrallah using a U.S.-made bunker buster bombs to flatten an entire civilian neighborhood. Murdered over 500 people. For the U.S., E.U., U.K., and Israel, a mountain of dead civilians justifies every single goal. The true horrifying reality of the rules-based order is being witnessed on a daily basis by the global south, and every day, millions are convinced that Washington's hegemony over the Middle East and the entire world must come to an end. All right. So I wanted to play this video. Um... Turn that off and say slideshow off. Bingo. Perfect. All right. Lockheed Martin reached an all-time high on the uh, equity markets in New York. This just after Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia blamed Israel for the continuing violence in the Middle East. And all of this, of course, after the worst atrocity in Beirut since Lebanon defeated nuclear-armed Israel in 2006. The rumors flooded the internet that this was a strike on the leader of Lebanese resistance. Anyone wants to know who Hassan Nasrallah is, look up an old interview that Julian Assange did with Nasrallah of uh, the Lebanese resistance movement and how uh, he's very different, arguably, to how he's portrayed in NATO nation media. This has been a terrible atrocity piling on the atrocities of the Israeli government. But the main issue here is, just as in the pager atrocity lauded in NATO propaganda media as uh, being innovative, not understanding that those tactics of supply chain uh, interference will one day destroy ordinary civilians' lives in the capitals of NATO countries, there were American warships, there were American planes off the coast of Beirut ahead of that pager atrocity. And now we hear directly that there were planes, warplanes, surveillance planes, jammer planes, AWACS planes off the coast of Beirut, switching off their transponders on and off before the 2,000 pound American bunker buster bomb destroyed buildings in densely populated areas of the capital of Lebanon, Beirut ostensibly for an assassination strike. The way the NATO propaganda media treat it as if this is completely normal. We should no normal. doubt expect the oh. enemies of Britain, the United States and the European Union to have assassination strikes for revenge purposes because of what they've done to peoples in the global south. No, this is escalation and continued escalation. It's benefiting the arms companies, it's benefiting the donors of both parties in the United States. And just as client states like Britain use Cyprus and the Akrotiri base to enable and facilitate the genocide in Gaza and across Palestine, the United States is hand in glove with operations in Beirut, whether it be the pager atrocity or it be the destructive force of the 2,000 pound bomb in Beirut 
on Friday night. So, don't believe what Lloyd Austin says at the Pentagon, even Israeli channels and Israeli sources are quoted in Israeli media. Yeah. They inform the United States. And just to laugh at the way the United States is uh, continuing to enforce the genocide, Netanyahu posed for a picture as if he gave the order for the atrocity in Beirut on Friday night, just after his speech to the UN General Assembly, when all those diplomats, when the global south, when most of the world who support Palestine, not the U.S. and its proxy, walked out. Walked out. Well, we'll have to wait and see what will Hezbollah's next move be already. As I'm speaking to you, there are meetings convened in Tehran and the cities of northern Israel, so-called, are already under it. Yeah. So cold. Ah. Uh I had somebody at dinner tonight literally tell me that, oh, the Lebanese people are happy that a that their sovereignty was was broke, it was breached, and that a two thousand pound bunker buster murdered five hundred of their citizens by Israel, and they're actually celebrating in their Israel. capital city. And they're celebrating, oh my God, that they were what? celebrating. Uh, oh my God. People was, are in La La Land. It's this, this is the brainwashing ridiculous. that comes out of corporate media because they're only hearing this from one place, from one place, mm -hmm. from the media that they watch, all right? They're being told this was okay. The, well, they was going after Hezbollah. Yeah, in a sovereign country right. did. Did they get Lebanon's permission to drop Hezbollah. bombs? <laughs> like, it's like you know, they don't even know how to say it, and they're gonna like, right? But try and well, no, they're, tell they're, you what it is. They're saying it the way that Netanyahu says it. Hezbollah. That's how he says it. Hezbollah. Right. Right. It's literally uh -huh. like, well, I mean, uh, I, I look. I just looked at them I mean, blankly, why, why, and I said, "The sovereign." Why don't you just dust off the war on terror, like? you know, guidebook that y'all threw away when you said Bush was terrible. I said this sovereign huh? country is applauding yeah. Israel. A Muslim country is applauding Israel bombing them and murdering their civilians to take out a quote-unquote terrorist leader who isn't really a terrorist. I, I mean, I couldn't even get into that with them. The brainwashing is so thick. Yeah. But wow. I mean, this is what we're fighting. This is what we're up against. All right. And yeah, while well, you know, that's all you know happening, Carlin puts it when it's, you know, Israeli freedom fighters, they're commandos or whatever. You know, like, how does he put that? That's right. Uh, Arab like, freedom fighters are terrorists, and Israeli freedom fighters are commandos. That's exactly right. Right. So while that's all happening. Ugh. Let's give them another $8.7 billion for their military aid for operations. I mean, we're living in the worst timeline ever. <laughs> I feel like Austin Powers could save us, though, given the right equipment. You know? Swedish equipment. I love gold. <laughs> So uh, I brought this second week in a row for Indie Media Award honoree Dave DeCamp, antiwar.com. I love it because he writes short articles that are easy to cover. On Thursday, the, real, Israeli, real well done. the Israeli Defense Ministry announced, not even all, we announced, but the Israel, Israel announced that it had secured $8.7 billion in military aid from the U.S. to support its ongoing military efforts again aoc tell me how hard um kamala harris and joe biden are working to fight for the palestinian people and end the genocide the money is there okay that means the genocidal slaughter in, in in gaza and israel's dramatic escalation in lebanon as well as the west bank and now going after syria next we know it's the greater israel project they're effectively going after in the long run and it seems that it's going to be backed there's by the, the... There's always the macro, and then there's the micro. It seems like it's going to be backed by the U.S. and the U.K. The ministry yep. said in a statement that its director, Major General Eyal Zamir, 
included negotiations in Washington to secure the military aid. It said the package includes a three and a half billion dollar grant for essential wartime procurement that has already been sent to Israel and a five point two billion dollar grant for air defenses. So they've already got some of the eight point seven. Now they're getting another five point two. Damn. <laughs> like they already get three you just billion. Keep counting the fucking money. They already get like, three billion a year. Earlier in the year, Biden gave them twenty billion, I believe. That was during the thing with Ukraine. Right. Ukraine got sixty. Yeah. And Israel got and another twenty. Asking for your financial support. You know. As cuckish uh. as cuckish as he is, <laughs> right, right on schedule, motherfucker decides to bring a bill I or know. some kind of an action. I know, dude. I and, know. This, we're not going I to know. send any more weapons to Israel. We've already sent uh -huh. all our weapons, so we can't send any more. And let's now say we're going to vote on not sending any more. Except we're still going to send more. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Pay attention, moron. The ministry said that five point that the five point two billion for air defenses will significantly strengthen critical systems such as Iron Dome. So we just gave them another five billion for Iron Dome and David Sling. While support David <laughs> Sling, they're the only fucking nuclear power David, in the region, but they're David, David against Goliath. Give me David. a break. <laughs> They have the U.S. and the U.K. David Sling. <laughs> David Sling and Iron Dome sounds like particular form of male actors. I'm just saying. You know? But whatever. <laughs> hey now. Chicka uh, chicka bow wow. All right. <laughs> I, I know, right? But of course, they well, also are supporting that, too, that five... But... That $5 billion also is going to support the continued development of an advanced, high-powered laser defense system currently, laser. In, its, currently oh, in its later laser. stages of development. So you know that that will be horrifying, and that's like directed energy weapons and shit. Um, yeah. Awful. Lasers. Awful. You and we're just, Dutch bastard. we're just giving it to them. Fuck the homeless. <laughs> fuck the people in North Carolina. Fuck the poor, fuck the right. handicapped. And the best part of this plan is no one can stop me. As Afshin Radasani said, don't listen to Lloyd Austin. He vowed Thursday that the U.S. would continue arming Israel because he's also a Raytheon board member or was and brushed off the idea of the U.S. setting red lines because there are no red lines. We've been committed. Yeah, yeah, clearly. We've been committed from the very beginning to help Israel commit atrocities, provide the things that are necessary for them yeah. to eliminate, ethnic, to create ethnic cleansing, and to be able to protect their sovereign <laughs> territory while disrespecting everybody else's sovereign territory. And that hasn't changed and won't change what in the think, future. There, I fixed it for you. What do you, you think Lord. Fat Sager is going to say about this one, boys and girls? There, I what fixed about it for that? you. What do you think he's going to say? All right. Ugh. So far, of course, the U.S., because they're embarrassed, has not announced the details of the $8.7 billion weapons package. But the funds are likely being pulled mm -hmm. from the $17 billion in new military aid for Israel that was included in the $95 billion foreign military aid bill that Biden signed back into law back in April. Israel, by the way, I said, as, <laughs> as I said also, Israel also gets $3.8 billion a year from the U.S. in annual military aid. Thanks, Obama. That was a 10-year vote yep. in, I believe it was 2016. So that's two more years on that. And then you can bet they're probably going to get a raise. Thanks, Obama. News of the, of the new U.S. support for Israel comes as, Biden, as the Biden administration claims it's pushing for a ceasefire in Lebanon. Forget about Gaza. Now they're pushing for a ceasefire in Lebanon. But the U.S. has yeah. not altered its well, support. Go ahead. No, nah, just I, like they're they're like, well, we got that one done, so let's work on this next one and pretend we're goalpost shifted. Oh. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. No red lines because they they oh. said 
blocking the aid trucks. You know, they, they're trying to get Blinken fired because he straight up lied to Congress about not blocking aid trucks. I, we know that's not going to yeah. happen. Blinken we is a, are the United States government. We don't do that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, all right, may, may James rest <laughs> in peace. Um, yeah. The U.S. has not altered its support of full-throated support for Israel um, and genocide and massacre <laughs> and the military aid and pledges. No, but until they close that door and then it's pretty full-throated. Right. You know, well, the military aid and pledges way. to defend Israel if the situation escalates have only emboldened Netanyahu. I mean, Mikulkowski, I mean, Netanyahu, who rejected the U.S. calls for a truce on Thursday. But return the hostages, right? Release the hostages, right? He doesn't want them yeah. to release the hostages. He has turned down how many peace deals in order to release the hostages because he knows. If that happens, he's got to stop bombing. And if he stops bombing, he's A, going to get voted out, and then he's going to go to jail. So he's basically doing this until he dies. Or until they throw him out and put him in jail. Finally. They need to. Motherfucker. All right. But huh. there's, also, there's also what happened at Columbia University this week. Layla... I don't know Layla. Layla is a Columbia student. L L A L. Oh, L Layla. It's Layla S. Okay, Q. Eric Clapton. Don't be on my knees. That's right. So Columbia, <laughs> Columbia University Public Safety has shown up to Butler Library because a disruption was reported. Students were studying silently. We will not be deterred by Columbia's blatant intimidation tactics. Wait, what? I'm here right now, and the response from public safety is comical. There are Columbia University delegates looking for students in Kefias outside of the study room. Everyone is studying silently, yet people reported a disruption. Let's see, what, what was the cause of the disruption? This is the cause of the disruption. The woman put on her laptop a printout that says while we're learning lebanon is burning so she says studying update i'm at butler silently working on econ homework while with a sign on my laptop and a kafia on my chair not even on her, on her head on her chair all right i was reported to columbia university admin by students with opposing views they asked the staff to kick me out of the library and said i was threatening she was sitting there. And then I saw something today. Um, there is a Substack writer, Heather Connolly, and she got she's been anti anti Zionist and and she's been outspoken about it. And somebody with a Substack blog decided to out her. And call her employer and try to get her fired. And it's like that. That's the kind of shit. That's why I don't. It's, it's just why, I, uh, you know, another reason why I don't want to be public about about my identity and, and who I am. And I don't I don't need that. Um, you know, nobody needs that. Nobody deserves that for sharing their opinions and for and for sharing news. And that's what this person does. And we're mm. also heavily demonetized, censored, deplatformed now from TikTok, uh, and suppressed to shit, as everyone tells me. Uh, even he, even Ryan Christie on a T Lab is like, dude, you guys are suppressed. If T Lab is telling you you're suppressed, holy shit. <laughs> That's all I can say. Mm. Um so there are multiple ways to support INN and independent media. Um we have been, you saw uh, on the Dave DeCamp one, the, the Zago Brothers illustrations. Uh, we're, we're working with him to support. And, you know, we, we have them done for all the Indie Media Award honorees. We were going to do that last week. We didn't do it this week. We're not going to do it this week again. Um, but go check that out. And the some of the money, and the money that you guys are supporting us with, we're giving to them to support them and their independent art. 
My we apologies. Got a, we got a nice hookup from Carnival Hill to the PayPal this week. Um, we also got a re-sign up from James Arkazuski over on the Substack. So thank you so much. Um, really appreciate all the support. We need it all. Every dollar counts. Thank you.